All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, Hurry towards your Lord's forgiveness and a garden as wide as the heavens and earth, prepared for the righteous, who gave both in prosperity and adversity, who restrain their anger and pardon people. God loves those who do good. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is Vatari and Messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. The Almighty Allah has made certain times of the year as seasons in which the rewards are multi multiplied, grades are raised, and worshippers are encouraged to continue their acts of worship. A person of sound mind is the one who makes use of these occasions, purifies his intention, and perfects his deeds, so that he can receive the blessing and mercy of his Lord. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Verily, your Lord has breath of his mercy on certain days of time, so expose yourselves to them. Perhaps one of you may get such a breath of mercy after which he may not suffer any misery. We are currently witnessing one of the greatest occasions in terms of reward virtue. And because the reward of good deeds in these days is multiplied, the virtues of deeds are numerous. The Almighty Allah made an oath in his glorious book, the Quran, by these days, saying, by the daybreak, by the ten nights, by the even and the odd. The interpreters of the Quran agree that these ten nights are the first ten days of the month of Dhul Hijjah. It goes without saying that Allah makes an oath by something it means it should be great and honorable. So this oath comes to inform us of the virtue of these days, their importance and position. Among the virtues of, the t of these ten days is that they are the delineated days mentioned in Allah saying, to attain benefits and celebrate God's name on specified days over the livestock he has provided for them. In these days, Muslims witness all great Islamic rituals, including prayer, charity, fasting, pilgrimage, and this happens only on, on, in these days. They are the most beloved days to Allah. Performing good deeds in these days is more pleasing to Allah than in any other time. They represent an opportunity to compete to please Allah to get his reward. The Prophet peace be upon him said, There are no days during which the righteous deeds are more pleasing to Allah than these days, meaning the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. He was asked, O Messenger of Allah, not even jihad in the cause of Allah? The Prophet peace be upon him replied, Not even jihad in the cause of Allah except in case one goes forth with his life and his property and does not return with either of it. So every Muslim should take the advantage of this great opportunity and reward and approach Allah with all forms of rituals and acts of worship. At the top of the righteous deeds that a Muslim can do in these days to get closer to Allah is Hajj or pilgrimage. As the Almighty Allah says, the pilgrimage takes place during the prescribed months. There should be no indecent speech, misbehavior, or quarreling for anyone undertaking the, pil the pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is actually the fifth pillar in, in Islam, with which a person completes his religious duties. After performing Hajj, a pilgrim is considered, an, is considered a newborn with regard to his sins. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever performs Hajj for Allah's pleasure and does not have sexual relations with his wife and does not do evil or sins, then he will return after Hajj free from all sins, as if he were born anew. Hajj is a great opportunity to learn virtues and high moralities. As a Muslim experiences righteousness and devotion to Allah, controls his whims and acquires good manners including altruism and modesty. Moreover, Hajj, as an act of worship, it is a message of peace for the whole universe. It is a manifestation of total peace, safety, and security. During Hajj, there is no room for quarrel, argument, discord, or even hunting. 
Allah said, you who believe, do not kill game while you are in the state of consecration for pilgrimage. Being peaceful here is not confined to humans and animals. It extends also to cover plants. A pilgrim is asked to be peaceful with plants, as the Prophet peace be upon him said. Allah has made this town a sanctuary. Its thorny bushes should not be cut. Its game should not be chased, and its fallen things should not be picked up except by one who would announce it publicly. In fact, this is a training for Muslims to be peaceful to all humans and plants after completing the obligation of pilgrimage, especially as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said in the farewell sermon, Shall I tell you who the true believer is? He is the one from whom the people's lives and wealth are safe. The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand people are safe. The Mujahid is the one who strives for the sake of worshipping Allah. And the immigrant is the one who forsakes sins. Also among the good deeds that a servant of Allah is recommended to do in these virtuous days is fasting. Fasting is one of the best rituals, and God has linked it to himself to indicate its greatness. In a Qudsi hadith, the Almighty Allah says, Every act of the son of Adam is for him, except fasting. It is done for my sake, and I will give a reward for it. Also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No servant of Allah fasts on a day merely for the sake of Allah, except Allah pushes the hellfire 70 years further away from his face due to fasting on this day. Thus, it is recommended to fast as many days as possible during the first nine days of the month of Dhul Hijjah, especially fasting on the day of Arafat for non-pilgrims. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has praised fasting on that day in particular, saying, fasting on the day of Arafah, I hope from Allah, expiates for the sons of the year before and the year, the year after. The day of Arafah is one of the witnessed days when Allah the Almighty showers his worshippers with his mercy forgiveness and keeps them away from the hellfire. It is a day when people's supplications are answered and their sins are forgiven. A day when Allah most high praises his slaves to the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth. It is the day when Allah perfected this religion and blessings upon the believers. Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, A Jew said to me, if this verse had been revealed to us, we would have taken it as Eid. This day I have perfected your religion for you. Omar said, I know the day it was revealed and the night on which it was revealed. It was a, fr a Friday night when we were in with the Messenger of Allah on Arafat. It is recommended for the Muslim to much remember Allah. Since remembrance of Allah is the life of hearts whereby serenity is realized. Allah the Almighty says, Those who believe and whose hearts are set at rest, at rest by remembrance of Allah, now surely by Allah's remembrance are the hearts set at rest. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also said, There are no days in which righteous deeds are greater and more beloved to Allah than those ten days. So praise and glorify Allah much in them. Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, used to say, Allah is great, Allahu Akbar. While in <coughs> his tent in the city of Mina, and the people used to reiterate after him until the entire city is replete with takbir. Ibn Omar on his part used to say takbir after the performance of prayer while on his bed sitting and walking. It is thus recommended for the Muslim to publicly say takbir in these days by kind of glorifying Allah the Almighty. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, shall I not tell you the best of your deeds? and those that give you the highest rank, and those that are the purest with your king, and are better for you than giving gold and silver, and better for you than meeting your enemy and striking their necks, they said, of course, 
he said, remembrance, dhikr of Allah Most High. In the same connection, Mu'ad, may Allah be pleased with him, says, a man does nothing to rescue himself from Allah's punishment better than remembering Allah. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <clears throat> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his, his family and companions. Muslim brothers, slaughtering a sacrificial animal is one of the most righteous deeds by means of which the worshiper gets closer to Allah, the Almighty. Since it is taken from the religion of Abraham and it is a proof, it has a proof in the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is one of the rights of Allah Most High. Allah says, that shall be so, and whoever respects the signs of Allah, this surely is the outcome of the piety of heart. In truth, offering sacrificial animals is a form of social solidarity that maintains affection, mercy, and cohesion among the members of the society. So when the Prophet, peace be upon him, found people in Medina suffering from hunger, he said, whoever has slaughtered a sacrifice should not keep anything of its meat after three days. When it was the next year, the Prophet said, O oh Allah's Messenger, shall we do as we did last year? He said, eat of it and feed of it to others and store of it for in that year the people were having a hard time and I wanted, I wanted you to help the needy. It is of cardinal importance to know that offering a sacrificial animal is fulfilled also through promissory notes, just as it is fulfilled by slaughtering. Undoubtedly, this is a way whereby Muslims' maximum benefit is realized, especially those who are unable to distribute it in the best way. The system of promissory notes thus helps distributing the sacrificial animals to those who truly deserve it, which maximizes the benefits and rewards of the sacrifice. In these, in these days, the Muslims shall do more good deeds, whose benefit is provided to all people. He should, for example, do much sadaqah, or charity, to make the poor and the needy happy. Allah Most High has urged us to spend money for His sake. O oh, you who believe, spend out of what we have given you, before the day comes in which there is no bargaining, neither any friendship nor intercession. And the believers the are and the unbelievers they are the unjust. In this connection, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Sadaqa does not decrease property. We are in a dire need of maintaining solidarity, affection, and seriously taking others into consideration in fulfillment of the Prophet's instruction, a Muslim is the brother of a fellow Muslim. He should neither commit oppression upon him nor ruin him. And he who meets the needs of his brother, Allah would meet big needs. And he who relieved a Muslim from hardship, Allah would relieve him from the hardships to which he would put on the day of resurrection. And he who did not expose the follies of a Muslim, Allah would conceal his follies on the day of resurrection. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also says, Every Muslim has to give in charity. The people asked, O oh Allah's Prophet, if someone has nothing to give, what will he do? He said he should work with his hands and benefit himself and also give in charity from what he earns. The people further asked, if he cannot fa find even that, he replied, he should help the needy, then he should perform. O oh Allah, help us in remembering you, in giving you thanks and worshipping you well.